Good afternoon. My name is Ted Holden. And I'd like to talk to you about our reservoir characterization analysis toolkit in CGG's Hampson Russell software. This toolkit is to address a number of particular issues that we see in reservoir characterization. To begin with, we have problems sometimes with elastic property logs, many times, with bad or missing P and shear sonic logs. We see pay intervals that have been affected by mud filtrate invasion, where the wellbore measurements for elastic properties are not responding to the pay sand to the hydrocarbon in place. We also see altered shells affecting sonic log responses. This illustrates the need to produce modeled logs for elastic properties. We also see changes in rock, uh, reservoir parameters. We need to understand these changes in terms of the rock physics and related elastic properties in regard to changes in effective pressure, changes in mineralogy, or changes in fluid, among others. We also see problems with resolution from the deterministic inversion results. This means that we will have difficulty in predicting compartmentalization of cleaniforms, detecting thin porosity layers and carbonates, or in detecting the desired lithophases types in those layered unconventional reservoirs below seismic resolution. How can we identify the lithophases of interest? How can we understand more about connectivity or lack of connectivity between sand bodies, say? We have a, a module, GOSI, that is part of this toolkit that will help us address these problems. And then finally, how do we use these inversion results, these elastic properties and estimations of lithophases type probability? How do we use those together to produce uh, 3D volumes of reservoir properties like porosity or, or fluid saturation? So there are three tools in the toolkit that will help us with these issues, ROCSI, GOSI, and Emerge. ROCSI to help us model logs, and then to help us understand uh, the variability in reservoir properties as we go through the project area and how that relationship exists or changes throughout the project area between reservoir properties and elastic properties. And then we'll look at GOSI, the second part of the toolkit, so that we can see detail below seismic resolution and understand more about uncertainty and connectivity of bodies. And finally, Emerge, to compute estimated reservoir property volumes. So if we look at a workflow, we use Rock SI in, in two phases, two spots in the workflow. First, to create model logs, and then use GeoSI to run the inversion, and then use Rock SI to evaluate inversion results in regard to the rock physics template. Uh, if needed, we reclassify facies in certain areas with GOSI as required. Uh, and this is in concert with rock SI. In this regard, we may have a lithophases type that's not represented at the well bore. So we would use the Monte Carlo modeling capability in rock SI to create that additional lithophases classification. And finally, perform connectivity analysis for certain areas in GOSI. And with Emerge, calculate reservoir property volumes as feasible. So let's look at Rock SI. We've already said what we can do with Rock SI. We can model elastic logs uh, to replace bad or missing logs. We can understand the relationship between reservoir properties like porosity, water saturation, and elastic properties from the inversion results. And we can interactively change parameters of reservoir properties, such as effective pressure, grain type, clay content, or fluids, among others. We can see the sensitivity and the directions of change in the rock physics template. 
So here's an illustration of a case where we have pay sands with mud filtrate invasion. We have the black curves, which are the measured curves, and then we have the modeled curves, where we have been able to put the light oil back into these sands uh, that was pushed out from mud filtrate invasion, so we can actually see what seismic should see. And here it is in a cross plot. And then finally, on the rock physics template, we have the oil sands here at about 90% water saturation. Due to mud filtrate invasion, we actually know they're down around 30% water saturation. Now we know that if we use a rock physics template like this in regard to PM impedance and VPVS ratio, that we can understand about, uh, more about porosity and water saturation. Porosity increasing in this direction, water saturation increasing in that direction. We see the oil sand points on the cross plot at this time. But if we were to go to a different area in the pro project or go to a different structure, with higher effective pressure, we would see the template move in this direction, indicating that these oil sand points should occur down here now, close to where this black arrow is. That would be our expectation. So we can go to the same reservoir into the adjacent structure and evaluate it in terms of our expectation for expect effective pressure. If we go back to the Vegas case, then we can look at the effect when we go to a high GOR. So we can see where those water saturation lines would move. And we would expect that these points with high GOR would now move down and be residing in this area here. Back to the base case and then to the dead oil scenario. If it were dead oil with 8 degrees API, they would all be bunched up in here. We can play other scenarios too, like increasing clay content. So when it, for GOSI, we've already said that it addresses the problem of many times our uh, desired lithophases, our reservoir, is below seismic resolution. We don't know if it's a, maybe a 30-foot sand, uh, layers of thinner sands, or maybe a thicker, shadier sand. But with the GOSI, we can include geostatistics in form of vertical and lateral variograms to help us understand and predict these distributions. I'd like to show you an example now. This is a well illustrating the deterministic result in the upper panel for VPVS ratio. The stochastic result from GOSI, a single realization, the P50 realization based on uh, preferred lithophases type volume, and then the seismic below. I chose to show VPVS here because it's more responsive to lithology. But in the next slides, we're going to look at it, probability of oil sand, the preferred lithophases type. Here we have deterministic results from strata and litho SI. You see the uh, four millisecond sample interval there. If we look at the uh, layering from the GOSI strata model, we see oil sand probability in that framework. We see much... Uh, uh, finer sampling here. This is actually at one millisecond here. And this is the mean of 200 realizations. Now when I export to SegY from the uh, GOSI stratum framework, uh, it introduces some smoothing, but actually it has a beneficial effect in terms of analysis or interpretation. From this particular section view, we can start interpreting different cleniform bodies, different bodies of sand, as illustrated here by the white ovals. Each one of these is interpreted as a separate body. So we can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about ten of them here very quickly.
Here's another well, another example, same thing. When we go to the SegY export at one millisecond uh, layering, uh, we can start interpreting several bodies here. Uh, this is very important, and we know that the history of this field, we know that it's uh, compartmentalized, quite compartmentalized. We also know that uh, fields like this uh, sometimes require tens of wells. For example, Amberjack, Gulf, uh, Mississippi Canyon 109, 66 wells were drilled in those compartments. When actually, if we had newer technologies at that time that we have available now, that field could have been exploited much more economically with the utilization of new seismic interpretation techniques and horizontal well drilling, where we could connect a number of these compartments together with one horizontal well bore. So maybe we could take this 66 wells and actually drill 10 or 12 horizontal wells to exploit even more uh, book reserves. There are a couple of companies who have already done this successfully, uh, Apache and uh, Energy 21. And both of them have had good success using these horizontal well drilling techniques in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, reworking old fields, finding more petroleum, more barrels in reserve from existing fields and also new fields. Here we have some further examples in other wells. Oh, I forgot to mention that the well log curve is the water saturation curve, indicating the presence of the oil sands. It's interesting here to note that we can't see that there's interruption in the sand from the inversion, or from the sand probability from litho SI, I should say. But here in the lower section from GeoSI results, we can actually see that there were two bodies, uh, one on the left side, one on the right side of this well bore in this section view, and that the well bore actually missed the sand. Here's another result, a number of uh, sand compartments in this example. And finally, this one. One thing that we can do with the uh, GeoSI is we can look at ranking of uh, preferred lithophases volume to make the determination of how much sand is connected to a particular well bore. And it's a histogram uh, ranking approach where we would uh, uh, look at the predicted volume from multiple realizations, all two or three or four hundred realizations. And the preponderance of evidence would indicate whether it's actually connected here in something like this or is not connected. And then finally, we need to take a look at estimating reservoir property volumes, such as porosity or oil in place. Uh, there's a couple of ways we could look at that. Porosity is a real necessity, and we have a good estimation of porosity here, actually. We produced a 3D volume for porosity. Uh, we could take individual bodies and we could evaluate the size of the tank in regard to that porosity. Then we could assume an irreducible saturation for that particular body. Or we could take a, a look at estimating the water saturation. In this case, porosity worked pretty good, but uh, water saturation did not. It has low fidelity. But we only have 100 to 80 percent water saturation here in the scale. From a qualitative basis, though, we can certainly identify the oil water contact, although we can't put a quantitative value for the fluid saturation. But like I said, uh, we could assume a certain irreducible saturation above the contact and then use these uh, volumes to estimate the porosity and, and along with the irreducible saturation for oil in place. So we see this toolkit resolves problems with elastic property logs. 
It helps us understand the changes in the uh, reservoir properties in the rock physics parameters, particularly in the offshore sands in regard to those changes in effective pressure mineralogy or fluids, among others. GOSI helps us to predict compartmentalization of cleaniforms and turbidites, detect thin porosity layers and carbonates, and identify lithophases types that are productive in un layered unconventional reservoirs. So we can identify the lithophases of interest and understand more about connectivity or lack of connectivity. And finally, with eMERGE, we can estimate reservoir properties like porosity and fluid saturation for estimation of oil in place. I'd like to bring your attention to a, a, an article, magazine, or news report. Uh, this was actually reported through Rutgers. And this is talking about Apache and about uh, Energy 21 and how they have been successful in applying new seismic technologies, new seismic interpretation, and horizontal drilling in their existing fields and in the identification of new fields. Here's a corresponding article, same information appeared in November 2014 issue of World Exploration. And there are another and a number of comments from different people here. One of them from Fieldwood Energy. They're reshooting all their large fields to make sure they haven't missed anything. Uh, they have purchased assets in the Gulf of Mexico last year from Apache and Sand Ridge. Horizontal drilling isn't a new science, but combining it with the 3D seismic imaging capabilities that we have now and analysis of these data provides uh, information required to exploit these sand bodies with horizontal well drilling technology. So this is enabling companies to utilize existing infrastructure in revitalizing some fields and producing all that was previously unknown, unidentified, or unproduced. Uh, typically unproduced because the operator didn't understand the effect of the compartmentalization. Andy Clifford, president of Saratoga Resources, says 3D Seismic has helped in acquiring new leases with new reserves and also a sharpening targets for developmental drilling in existing field. Uh, Energy 21 in, in 2013 using these new technologies combining newer seismic imaging and analysis along with horizontal drilling in 2013 increased their proved reserves in the Gulf of Mexico by about 50%. So this is really significant. So that's about all I have today. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.